In part three of the Iranian Divs, Demons and Mysteries, we have to acknowledge the Prophet Zoroaster and his Mubeds, or the religious leaders of Iran, who have really elevated women in the evil hierarchy. In this episode, let's meet the main demons of Zoroastrianism. First, Akumana, the flirting demon. The work of Akumana is to produce vile thoughts and unpeacefulness into the man, according to Bundahesh. Akumana is the personification of sensual desire. She loves sunset and often travels after dusk and leaves at dawn, perhaps when men are the weakest, toward Akumana. She was first sent by Ahriman to seduce the Prophet Zoroaster, but apparently couldn't. Her scientific name is Delbari. Then Aeshma, or Fury. This is the demon of lust and anger, wrath, conflict, and revenge. Thus, revengefulness is the work of Ahriman. What causes anger? Perhaps a sting by a fury fly. That is when you find yourself picking on someone for no reason at all. Aishma is more contagious than the common cold. You just look at someone, and it may be you who is the next angry person. Here is a few suggestions if you were stung by the fury fly. Think about something funny and something that you really like about the person. The next best thing is to bite your tongue or say nothing at all because whatever you say, you will regret later. And it is said that the Aeshma's offsprings are the demons with disheveled hair. So check your hair if you're angry, or comb it some more. The third demon is Indra. Indra is Puchi in Persian. Puch means nonsensical, of course, not a puppy. Indra is the personification of apostasy. This, in most religions, is the biggest sin. In a way, it means you don't agree with the constitution of that religion or the Bill of Rights. That is to say, you reject the root and foundation of religion. One of the cures for Indra found by Muslim was jazia, and then haraj, or property tax. Once you pay heavily for non-believing, then you may. In the West, the followers of Indra are called anarchists. I think it's a funny episode in Groucho Marx's song called I'm Against It. The fourth demon is Nankaithia or discontent. In Persian, Nashadi. The work of the Div Nankaithia is that she produces discontent among the creatures, according to Bundahesh. Nankaithia is a beautiful woman on the face. She has legs of ostrich with striking eyes and perfumed hair within which taser-tailed scorpions sleep. Nankaithia is just like that western dragon that takes away the beautiful maiden with all the jewelry and gold, sits in a cave somewhere in the mountain. But the opposite, Nankaithia is that young, beautiful maiden who takes around, to take, who takes away the rich guys, the prince, the rich princes. She goes and picks them up at the bars, single clubs, polo games, and so forth. Of course, she prefers guys who are hot and can dance and drink and be happy, or is it the other way around? Nankaithia takes away the rich guys to her place and hang on to them until she is bored. Whatever you do, don't caress her hair because you will be buzzed with a sleepy dose. Then she will drive you off to her cave where she has of course good retro pop and ruhozi music. Soon she will be bored, tired and discontent again and you won't be hot anymore. When she lets you go, you find out that you are an old lover boy, over a hundred years old. So, next time, 
When a girl glances at you at the bar, introducing herself with a sexy Roxy, get busy doing something else, or order a glass of soy milk, or a hot tea. The fifth and the master demon is Saurva, or Zurva. In Persian, it is Zurgu. According to Bondaesh, the work of the Div Sorva, that is, the leader of the Divs, is this, evil authority, oppression, unlawfulness, and the greed for more power. This Div is called Sorva in most Eastern European countries. In Bulgaria, he is called Antichrist, which matches with Zoroastrian beliefs. And when we talk about Islam, we will see Surva again as Taghut. His eternal opponent is Khashtravarya or Shahrivar. The sixth demon is Tariq, which represents hunger. This demon used to be very thin, but she found a good source of food, and now she helps hard into them and does not let anyone get near it. She knows if people are hungry, they get into all sorts of crimes. She enjoys seeing poverty to see people steal and kill to find food. So eat and drink and feed the, er feed the others to be a good Zoroastrian and help Horvatat or Hordad, which represents wholeness to fight Tariq. Oh, this one is my favorite one. Zarikh or Piri. Zarikh is person personification of aging. She seems nice and helpful. And you are often impressed by clever things, she says. She calls it wisdom and wants to take you to the golden age of man. Usually, women notice her first. A few days before their birthday, they keep seeing her everywhere they go. Men, even in their 70s, don't give a hoot if they run over the old hag with their Ferrari. Zarikh, just like vampires, bites you on the neck. So, if we have learned anything from Dracula movies, don't look at her in the eyes because you will be at the dead end. And as I was reading about Zarikh, I read some interesting adage about the old age. Adage? Such as, age, take it if it is in sage, and leave it alone if it is in cage. And the best thing about the old age is, when people call you around 9 p.m. and say, uh, sorry, did I wake you? These pictures are, of course, courtesy of Katie Holmes and Sanjay Gupta. And last but not least, as they say, Yatus or Afsungar. She is good with drama. The witch has a lot of surprises for you. Yatus likes tropical zone most. Drive any direction in a big city for 20 minutes or so and you will come across one. You could tell if a child will grow to become a sorcerer or witch. Those kids whose favorite subject is spelling bee, don't mess with them. And this is the end of part three, Zoroastrian demons. But they don't go far because sometimes, four centuries later into Islam, some of the fantastic Persian demons are actually revived with Shah Nameh and Ferdowsi. We will meet Ahriman taking King Tahmures around the world so that other Divs can take over his kingdom. We will also meet the never-ceasing Zahak who appears in every few generations. And we meet marvelous Divs such as Akwan who can change into many shapes, Arjang Div, and, of course, the mighty Diva Sepid. It is most important to see the 
everlasting impact of demons in present-day literature and arts of Iran because of the works of Ferdowsi and Shahnameh. So, make sure to visit Episode 4, Islamic Demons.